male there and female. Are. This issue affects more than women. It affects trans men. It affects gender queer folks. Women have wombs. I am not a woman, and I have a womb. You are a woman. I know. Have a womb. I know. No, no, no. Next no. question. Wow. Wow. You know, I got to say, uh, growing up in a small town, I want to be very honest. And I hope that honesty is permitted on a platform like YouTube. This is definitely isn't meant to hurt. It definitely isn't meant to attack. But growing up in uh, a small town like a Gainesville, Florida, you didn't meet. I don't ever re remember meeting a trans person. I know definitely in more southern and rural areas. You meet more conservative ways of life. You meet people that fall into those conservative type of mindsets. And I'm not saying anything is wrong or right. What I'm saying is when I see that woman say you are a woman, part of me really understands why she says that sentence. Because if you come up from an upbringing where you've only known there to be ever two genders, then that's the only thing that you really see. Again, I'm not saying what's wrong or what's right. I'm merely just stating that I can understand if that's a perception she's always grown up with, why she feels that way. Another thing that kind of comes up when it comes to this trans conversation is that, honestly, it's a little bit confusing. And the reason sometimes it's confusing to me is because I think there's so much variation in the, sp in the spectrum of the LGBTQIA community that it becomes a little bit hard to understand sometimes where a person falls. There are moments where I think it's a woman and then they say they or they say uh, refer to me as he. I just like to wear, wear female clothing because of so much variation. It makes it confusing to consistently know where a person lies and how they are to be referred to. And I don't want to make that as an excuse for misgendering, misidentifying, but there are times where a person will legit look like a dude and be like, nah, you can call me they, or you can call me she, or it has a, a completely different way that they would prefer to be addressed. And this brings into this whole conversation of pronouns. Growing up in, in Southern places, man, there were as only he or she. There was nothing in between. There was nothing as such. I remember moving to the Pittsburgh for a little bit and going to the University of Pittsburgh. And the teacher towards my like last year, maybe it was like 2019, they started uh, asking the teachers to ask us to identify our pronouns. And that was crazy to me being in a the class. They'd be like, she was like, and what are your pronouns? And I was like, what what do you mean? What are my pronouns is he like, what else would you think it would be in my head? I said that, but it became a very a conscientious push to make sure to include and try to make every person on the scale and the spectrum feel comfortable. Right. And that's an important step to take, you know, because we do want to be inclusive. We do want to understand where everyone is coming from. I, I can understand an individual who maybe was born with one body and is on the way to transitioning towards the person that they want to be. I think that's an incredibly tough journey to make, especially in a society in this time. And I commend them for the strength to go after whoever they feel they should be in society. That isn't a, uh, it takes an amazing amount of courage to do that, right? But in the same sense, and not but to wipe away everything I said before, in the same sense, understand that there's going to be a large group of people who, because of conservative bringings, it is harder for them to understand exactly where you come from, right? It's going to be harder for them to understand that you saying I was born as a man, but now I'm a woman. That isn't going to make sense to a lot of conservative people who are in the church every Sunday and they believe in very heterosexual values. And it's not, you know, sometimes when I see reactions from LGBTQIA, you know, type community, sometimes you see reactions as if you don't, under as if, if you don't understand my position and my perception, then that means that it's hate crime or you're transphobic or you're this or you're that. And that's one of the things I think sometimes I don't agree with with that type of community and atmosphere is as is as if 
if we don't totally agree with you, now we're transphobic. Now we're homophobic. Now we're, we're scared of everything that could be possibly gay. And it doesn't mean that. And I think that's something I would like to see more strength in within like a LGBTQIA plus community. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Forgive me if I'm not. Please correct me in the comments. Is growing up, when I grew up with gay people, you know, gay people were not soft. And I say this because gay people, and if you were living in a rural area with very conservative values, to be gay was to, to be defying everything around you, everything in existence. And if you're in southern areas and you're gay, you in many places are not accepted. And, we're, and they're looking down upon you from the moment that you walk in. Every gay person or every person who follows alternative opinions and thoughts understands those type of feelings, right? the people that I knew that were gay were actually very strong willed, very strong spirited people who were ready to throw down at a moment's notice. Like they would be ready to swing on you at the jump of a hat because they had to develop an exterior to defend themselves. They had to develop an exterior where it was meant to go against the world because to the world, they were seen as a unnatural occurrence. And let me say here and now, you're not a natural occurrence. I want to make that very clear. But in many conservative areas, you are. You're not seen as the norm. You're seen as the outlier. Gay people I knew had a lot of strength. They were not the people that you could necessarily walk over because they had to deal with so much, excuse my language, bullshit from the world that they had to become strong spirited. That is not necessarily the community that you see that responds to every little thing, every little comment that they don't like in social media. But then maybe it's to say that the stronger willed, you know, gays and, and trans and all and those type of people, maybe they just choose not to comment. And the ones that you get are the ones that stay on social media all the time. Right. And are always commenting. Um, but. When I heard, first heard, you know, this woman state what she said, I could understand why she would have those perceptions because just from her mindset and just a you know, couple of seconds that I'm watching the video, you could really tell that she comes from conservative backgrounds, you know, and it has not yet reached. That's not the perception she understands to understand many genres outside of a man and a woman and i'm not going to tell you as if i completely understand every genre outside of a man and a woman there are many things i don't understand you know i try to be respectful i say how would you like me to refer to you as well too but it is confusing and it is going to be confusing for a lot of individuals that come from very similar backgrounds that i did i'm going to be honest i come from caribbean people and southern people two groups of people that were very old school that are very old school and very Old fashioned in Haitian culture, there is. I have, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, in my Haitian family, I have never met a gay person. I don't even know what that looks like, you know. And if I were to tell certain family members, you know, like this person is gay, they'd be like, oh, they're lost, you know, they need to go to church. Um, they would immediately start rebuking that and see that as a sin. Is it fair, you know, you know, obviously, not everyone has to make choices in, in what they want in life, but. A lot of Caribbean cultures do not accept um, homosexuality. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to be honest with that. You know what I'm saying? So this was an interesting video to see because it made me have a lot of questions and internal debates with myself. Like, you know, ask yourself this. If, if you, you know, say you're a heterosexual and the person you're interested in, you find out that they were once the same sex as you. How do you, how do you view that? You know, how do you think about that? And it is a very important question because I'm going to tell you from my perspective, I don't know. I, I you know, personally, I couldn't move right at the time because I come from upbringers where even though I, I could be friends with an individual like that, I don't know about dating an individual like that. I just don't come from that upbringing, that background. So I currently have not reached a level of consciousness to understand that from that angle from that perspective but you know just ask yourself that question right it's a very interesting question to make you think about like whoa all right so you know what are your comments what do you think drop drop down your feedback below 
Um, do, how, you know, are you guys from conservative areas? Do you understand what I'm saying when I'm bringing those factors and those points? This is Ori Reacts. I'm Oriel. Uh, he's the artist, producer, a whole bunch of things, creator, entrepreneur. Hope you guys are having a blessed day. Until next time.